Tell us about Zeros. It's, it's a collaborative effort, correct? My friend Deb and I were talking about how TV writers work and how they work in a big room yeah. and they do all, you know, they argue with each other and you use like the social part of your brain when you, mm. when you talk about a book that you're writing. Right. And we, and we realized that us novelists, we just sit around alone all day and we don't yeah. use that part of our brain. So she, Deb Biancotti, and Margot Lanigan and I decided to write a book together just to see, in a, using almost a TV model ah. where we outlined together, but we each wrote different uh, chapters as if they were episodes in you know a season of television oh. and we wound up with zeros which is um, which is which is it's basically kind of the same idea in terms of collaboration because it's these six characters who have superpowers but all of their superpowers are crowd based okay um, so for instance there's one who's has a um, who can see through anybody else's eyes in the room so when she's alone she has no superpower at all but in a crowd like this she can she's almost omniscient so all of these superpowers get stronger as there's more people around. So they're almost like collaborative superpowers as well. Oh, that's really nice. So it sort of brings it full circle. Right. That it's I about the power of collaboration. <laughs> yeah, they're kind of crowdsourced powers. Yeah. So from this experience, do you want to now write for TV? <laughs> um, I don't know if I could. I, you know, it, it seems a little daunting. One thing I noticed about collaborating is that although the highs are higher, the lows uh -huh. are lower, yeah. because the conflict is not just in your head, it's actually out on the table and, and with, with someone else. So it's kind of, um, so, it, so I can't imagine what it would be like in those, in those rooms, in, in TV shows where there's like 20 people or you know, even yeah. eight people around the table. Yeah, it must be everyone fighting to be her. <laughs> I would think so. I might be too old for that. <laughs> And now your your previous books are our series. Yes. Um, so what what's what would you say is the biggest difference when you approach it as as a writer writing a standalone or writing a series? Huh. Do you find I mean, you have to pace yourself? I I think I think in trilogies. Oh, okay. You know, I grew up a science fiction reader, a fantasy reader, so you yeah. know, J.R.R. Tolkien, the Foundation trilogy by Asimov, those were like the books that made the most sense to me. And I think when you do fantasy or science fiction or when you create superpowers or new rules of physics, mm -hmm. once you've spent that effort making that stuff up, you want to play in that play playground for a while. Right, so I feel like right. the first book of a series is just sort of like setting up the world. And the second world, yeah. the second one is where you really get to hang out and mm -hmm. do cool stuff. And then, of course, the third one, you have to wrap it up. Right, so so right. I almost, in a funny way, like second books the best. Oh, yeah. That makes a lot of sense. Well, thanks so much for speaking with us. Yeah, it's a pleasure. <laughs> thanks for covering BEA. Sure.